Welcome to this video on analyzing graphs. In this video we are going to learn what features are important on a graph, learn how to locate all of these features, briefly review how to solve equations, and work a polynomial example. Okay, so over here on the left we can see all of the different features of the graph that are important. So first let's look at the zeros. So these are the places that are the x-intercepts. So if we look at our graph, we have a zero right here, and we have another zero right here. Next, let's look at the y-intercept. That's where our graph crosses the y-axis, and we have one y-intercept right there. Usually, for anything that's a function, you're only going to have one y-intercept. Next, let's look at stationary mins and maxes. So these are the places where we have a zero slope. So this x-intercept here also is a stationary min. We have another one here, and we have another one here. On this particular graph, we don't have any stationary max. Singular points. These are where we have corners or vertical tangents, and we have one singular point right there. Inflection points, these are where our graph changes from concave down to concave up or reverse. And let's see, here we're concave up, here we're concave up, here we're concave up, and then in here it changes to concave down. So I think our inflection point is right about here. Okay, next. What's in, one of the things that's important is the behavior near, near places where f of x is undefined. And if we look at our graph here, we have this vertical asymptote here at x equals 1. And so we would say as x approaches 1 from the left, our f of x approaches infinity. So as we moved towards 1 on this left side, our y values, our f of x approaches infinity because we zoom up to positive infinity here. And then we say the same thing over here. As x approaches 1 from the right, so as we approach 1 from the right, we're again going to positive infinity. Now sometimes instead of saying from the left, they say um, one and then they put a little subscript of a plus and if they do that that means from the right here they would put x approaches one and then they'd put a subscript of a minus either way our y values approach positive infinity if our graph would have shot down this way maybe on this side we would say it approached negative infinity the last thing we're going to look at is the ending behavior. So we could say as x tends toward negative infinity, so as our x gets really um, highly negative, our y values here shoot off towards positive infinity. So we could say y or we could say f of x goes towards positive infinity. You could leave that positive off too. Okay, then we could say as x tends towards positive infinity, our y's, so as we get very large and negative, it looks like our y values are getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So our y values approach zero. So those are the different features of the graph that you're going to need to be able to locate. Okay, so I have a chart here, and it goes through the different types of functions and how it gives you an example of each type of function and then the basic method for solving. There's a wide variety of functions in this homework for um, this section, and so it's really going to challenge your, your algebra skills at times. There's not a large number of problems, though, so that should help. Okay, so if you have a linear function, something like 2x minus 5 equals 1, you guys know how to solve this. Get the variable on one side, the numbers on the other, divide by the coefficient. If it's a polynomial, then we have several different methods. So we could factor, we could use a quadratic formula. Um, if it's of the form 
x, say, squared equals 27, we can square root both sides and we'd get x equals plus or minus the square root of 27. And then if none of these methods work, you can always use the root finder on your calculator. On the homework, just watch to make sure if you need to found, have an exact answer or an approximate answer. Okay, so next, rational functions. These are functions where you have fractions. So you have the x in the denominator. And over here, I have how you'd go about solving it. So you got to clear the fractions. So in this one, what we're doing is we're multiplying by x minus 1 in all three of the terms. And notice how those two cancel. And so that gets rid of all those fractions, and then we end up with this. Now we're just at a regular quadratic type function, and so we would use the methods for this, the polynomial. Okay, so radical equations, here we have some sort of root in our equation. And if that's the case, then what we want to do is we want to get the root on one side of the equation in the numerator by itself, and that's what we do here. It takes all those steps to get that done. Then once you get the radical isolated, get rid of that radical by cubing both sides, and then go about solving for x. So if we have an exponential equation, here you've got um, the variable is in the exponent. That's how you know it's exponential. And over here we have the process of how to solve for that. So what you do is you isolate the exponential, get it by itself on one side, natural log both sides. Remember the natural log of e is just 1, so we just end up with x equals natural log of 4. And then finally, a logarithmic equation. Um, so again, isolate the log just like you isolate the exponential. And then once we get here, we could rewrite this in terms of its base. And remember, if you have y equals log base b of x, this means b to the y equals x. So all I did here was I said the base here to the 3, the exponent, equals what's inside that log, and then solve for x. OK, so here we are. This time our function is this polynomial here. And notice we don't have any um, interval. So this we're supposed to um, find the extrema for the entire real number line. So first we're going to find the x and y intercepts. And remember to find those x intercepts, you set y equal to 0 and solve for x. So if we set y equals 0, we have 0 equals negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 36x. Notice how that there's an x in each term. So I can factor out that x. And in fact, let's factor out a negative x. And we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 36. So from here, from there, I have x equals 0. But I also have this factor, 2x squared plus 3x minus 36 equals 0. And I can tell that that's probably not going to factor. So I would use that quadratic formula. So x is going to equal negative b, so negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 9, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 36, all over 2a. And if you figure out what this thing is, it's going to be the square root of 297 over 4. Now, if they're asking you for an exact answer, one of the answers would be negative 3 plus the square root of 297 over 4. You can actually simplify that a little bit more, but we, we don't necessarily need to. And then the other one is going to be the negative. OK, so we have found the x-intercepts. Now let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is actually much easier than the x-intercept. So for the y-intercept, all you need to do is set x equal to 0 and solve. So you're just finding f of 0. If we plug in 0, we get 0 plus 0 plus 0. So I get 0. So we have this point 0, 0. And notice that is also one of our points here. Okay, so next what we need to do is we need to find those stationary points. 
So remember our f of x is negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 36x. And if we're trying to find stationary points, what we need to do is find the derivative. So our derivative is going to be negative 6x squared minus 6x plus 36, and we're setting that equal to 0. Now notice that each of my terms has a factor of 6, and also the coefficient of my x squared term is negative. I always like that to be positive if possible. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 6. And I get x squared minus, or no, plus x minus 6 equal to 0. And I happen to know that that factors, so let's say I'm going to have x and x. I'm going to have 1 plus, 1 minus, that's going to be plus 3 minus 2. So I have x equals negative 3, x equals positive 2. We'll worry about the y values later. Okay, so next we're supposed to find singular points. We're just running through the process that we go through from the previous section. And for singular points, you're looking for where your derivative might not be defined. So our derivative is negative 6x squared minus 6x plus 36. And this is a polynomial. There's no values that if we plug in, we get something like a 0 in the denominator. So there are no singular points. And remember, we weren't given an interval on which our function was defined, so there are no endpoints. So, you know, usually we would see something like from negative 2 to 5 or something like that, and then your endpoints would be negative 2 and 5, but that isn't the case with this one. Okay, so next we're supposed to find the inflection points. So remember those inflection points occur where that second derivative equals 0. So let's find the second derivative. So our second derivative is negative 12x minus 6. We're going to set that equal to 0. So negative 12x minus 6 equals 0. That gives us negative 12x equals 6. So x equals negative 6 divided by 12 or negative 0.5. So let's start putting in all the relevant x values into our table. Um, we're going to skip our x and y intercepts in this table because unless those x and y intercepts also turn out to be stationary points, they aren't up for um, being maxes or mins. So um, we're going to have negative 0.5. That's, this is actually an inflection point. We had negative 3 and 2. Those were our stationary points. And that's it. No singular points, no endpoints. So let's grab our calculator here. I have my function in my y1. I first want to go and fill out my table. This is old stuff. I'm going to delete it all. And the points that I want to have in my table are negative 0.5. negative 3 and 2 and our y values here are negative 18.5 negative 81 and 44 so now let's go ahead and look at our graph before we just press graph let's set that window so if I look at my different values here, um, the relevant or the important ones are like from negative 3 up to 2. So let's go a little bit farther. Let's go from negative 7 up to 5, an x scale of 1. And notice that my y values range from negative 81 to 44. So let's go from negative 100 up to 50. Our, our y values actually might be um, bigger or smaller than that, but those are the y values in this little table here. We could also do zoom fit, and that, that would work fine. Here's my graph. So let's, let's look at some of these points. So negative 0.5, that's right there. Does that look like it's an inflection point? Sure does. Um, negative 3, that's that point right there. So we can tell that that is a relative 
min. And remember, another way to tell if that thing is a relative min is to take that x value and to plug it into our second derivative. So this would give us a 36 minus 6, which is 30, which is greater than 0. That means my function is concave up there, and so that is a min. And then 2, 44, that puts us up here, and so that is a relative max. Now notice that since our domain is not restricted, our function goes up forever this way, and it goes down forever this way. So for this function, there are there's no absolute max or min. Okay, we have a couple more questions that we need to answer about our function. So in part F, they're asking us to indicate the behavior near points where the function is not defined. And if you remember, our function was that nice polynomial, f of x is negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 36x. This is does not have any points where it's not defined, so um, there are, there's nothing to describe here. If our function was something like f of x equals 1 over x minus 1, then we would want to look at what's going on at x equals 1. We'll see an example of that later in another video. Okay, last question. Indicate the behavior at infinity. So if we look at our graph here, we can say that as x gets very negative, so as x tends toward negative infinity, our y values are shooting off towards positive infinity. And we could say as x tends towards positive infinity, our y values are shooting off down this way towards negative infinity. That's it for this video. Watch for another one that has a slightly more complicated function soon.